part. It's 11% of the exam. I might have to do this in two parts. It's 528. Now let's see how it goes. Okay, to start with, um, let's start with uh, the gates. All right, with contemporary art, there's always some idea behind it. So, Cristo decorated Central Park. Um, he decorated the pathways. He's famous for decorating and then removing. He beautifies and takes away, and it makes you appreciate it more. So what he did was he beautified Central Park, but the paths that people walked on. So a big part of it was the experience and the joy and the beauty of this temporary uh, installation. So, and that's Cristo, and a big part of this kind of art is the experience. So that the experience of your everyday is elevated by Christos the Gates. Vietnam Memorial is a memorial of all the people that died in Vietnam. It's minimal because it's reduced and basically it has, uh, you can see there, it's just a black slab with names on it, but the names reflect and you get a strong experience here. You go down, you're like six feet under. These were the people that died. It's almost like a portal or a connection with the dead in a very modern, minimal kind of way. The crossing is a video that has a lot of spiritual qualities. The water pounds him and transforms him and ends him, but he appears to be reborn. Big idea of the crossing appears to be crossing into the spiritual. Connects very well with all the religious art we've seen. And the water, it's powerful, but it's also cleansing in a way. So it's not really a death. It's more like a transformation or a crossing. Electronic Superhighway is a sculpture. It's the United States, and these are TVs, and it's an installation, and this artist was into TV art, and it's, it really shows the United States, and the big idea also is technology and how technology connects us now more than place. And the place has uh, images of, that are emblematic of the, of the place itself. All right, Androgyny 3 deals with um, her story is important. She grew up um, between Stalin and Hitler and the death and butchery of that area. And this is exploring human suffering. And, you know, if you look at it, it's hollow. It's a body, new materials, exploring the, like the idea of body and soul and, and really about human suffering and cruelty. All right. Uh, now we're going to go to some weird ones. Here we go. Uh, not weird, but here we go. Okay, this is untitled from... History Portrait Series by Cindy Sherman, very famous artist. She's exploring identity, female identity, her own identity through the way women are portrayed in paintings. So this is referencing uh, paintings of the past, of Judith cutting the head off here. Uh, she has other paintings that are famous ones. So she's exploring identity. It looks a little ridiculous because she's pointing out the ridiculousness of a woman being a dangerous to the man here throughout history. So she explores identity and the way women are viewed through art and through the media. She did one on movies as well. All right. Pink Panther, this guy's kind of funny. It's, it really doesn't look like art. It looks cheap. He's basically taking like a cheap looking toy and putting it in a museum. Uh, he's kind of a funny guy, wise guy. I think he's pushing here like, is this art? This shiny toy looking thing, which he did not even make. Um, also, there's something called appropriation. Cindy Sherman appropriates this image from an ancient painting in a modern context. He appropriates a cartoon character, the Pink Panther. Also, almost making fun of feminism here. Like, feminists don't want to be viewed as objects. He has that here. Uh, critics hated him, but he became very wealthy. Uh, Lying with Wolf, Kiki Smith. She, this is kind of rewriting a story. We all know the story of Little Red Riding Hood. She's rewriting the story, and she's really into the narratives that women tell themselves. She's concerned with feminism and with women being empowered. And so, don't let the wolf eat you. Rewrite the story make friends with the wolf, come out of the wolf. Uh, she's, she's interested in women's identity and feminism and rewriting the story of women. All uh, right, let's go to Asia. Sunflower seeds. This was Weiwei, and he made all those sunflower seeds. 
And you remember there was that whole process. It was made with the porcelain and they hand painted them the way that traditionally the importance of porcelain uh, and uh, the vases in China he has here. And he makes all these seeds. And the big idea, it, it you know, there's, there's some subtext of Mao as the sun and the sunflowers and some text about China here and Chinese tradition and China. All right. Uh, Book from the Sky also goes back to, this one goes back to the communist days. This young man grew up in communism and was su surrounded by propaganda. He was an artist and he was forced to do propaganda. All right, what's going on here? These are letters that don't make any sense. This is like being surrounded by information that doesn't make sense, perhaps connecting back to the propaganda of China during the Cultural Revolution. Um, the walls, by the way, look like uh ink paintings, which represent great art of China that the communists hated, and the wood blocks represent what the communists liked. All right, this is uh, Pure Land by Mariko Mori, a Japanese artist. This is a Buddhist painting, with, and Pure Land was like Buddhist heaven with futuristic symbols. Alien, bodhisattvas or helpers, a space age, stupa, and always the artist in here as well. This was an installation with wind and air and smells where you experienced Buddhist heaven. Summer Trees uh, is a Korean work and it's, it's abstract, but also referring a Chinese ink painting. The ink painting again symbolizes something great and beautiful from Korean China, from, from Korea and, and China. And so it's an abstract version, modern version, of an ink painting. And this was very important for identity. This was about Korean identity. And when he wrote this, he wanted to bring something great from their culture back into this work. All right, uh, let's go to Africa now. We have the swing, Fragonard, or this interesting guy. He takes the swing, makes a sculpture, cuts the head off, um, emphasizing violence. What's he doing here? This is a very nice privileged way of life. He's exploring the violence and the oppression and the colonialism that supported this lifestyle. And of course, they got their heads cut off in France as well. Uh, and the fabric represents um, imperialism as well because it's Dutch, okay? All right, old man's cloth, interesting work here. He takes bottle caps, pounds them into fabric and creates an old man's cloth. Uh, number one, the bottle caps are like liquor. That goes back to the slave trade, liquor for slaves to England. It also goes back to um, colonialism of, of exploitation and liquor. And it's got some African things. It's gold. It looks like Kente cloth, which is traditional African cloth. Um, but it also symbolizes um, the slave trade and the dark history and colonialism of the past. Uh, praying Mantra is a female figure, but she looks scary and like a praying mantis. This is really exploring the way African women are viewed as dangerous from a racist point of view, not as people, but like a praying mantis that will devour you or hurt you. The tree and the serpent represents almost like Eve or the devil. And it's a very, it's a very dark, it's exploring the way a racist way of viewing an African woman as dangerous and not a person. We've seen a lot of the female figure. This is, uh, 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 this is a version of that. All right, I think I'm gonna pause on that one. Part two is coming up next.